ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports and the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, NASCAR, welcome you to the Daytona International Speedway for the two Gatorade 125 qualifying races for Sunday's Daytona 500. I'm Matthew Merlino, welcome along to the preliminary event for the Great American Race in the 1949 NASCAR Strictly Stock season. We have just about 20 race cars competing in each of these two events today, 13 laps in each around the two and a half mile banked oval. Let's go get the command and the starting grid. Drivers, start your engines! So the command is given, and let's get you started as the cars roll off with your starting grid for this event. On the pole in that red number 41 car, that is Curtis Turner alongside in the kind of teal, maybe mint-colored number 47 is Fonty Flock. That is row number one. Behind in the number seven, starting in third, is Bob Flock, Fonty's brother. And alongside him in the number five is Ray Erickson. The 43, Jack Russell, he starts sixth, starting fifth in the number three, Bill Snowden. Uh, the 25 of Bob Smith on the outside of row number four. Inside is Bob Epperson in the number 11. Inside row number five, I believe that is Sarah Christian. I can't make out the number on that car just yet. Let's see if we can have it roll around. No, it is the 14 of Roy Hall, and alongside him is Bobby Green in the 21. The 93 of Ted Chamberlain and B.E. Renfro in the number one car start in row number six. Jim Pascal in the number 60 starts on the inside of row number seven. Alongside him is the number nine of Raymond Lewis. And that's the starting grid that will give you. So I believe, I haven't done the math just yet, but I believe that this at every car that competes in these two 125-mile qualifying races will make the Daytona 500. This is just to set their starting position. Pace car pulls down pit lane. We're ready to get a new season of NASCAR racing underway. There it is, the first green flag of the year. Curtis Turner leads them to it alongside him, Fonty Flock, in this 13-lap race around the two-and-a-half-mile Daytona International Speedway. Turner inching ahead in turn number two now with help from the number seven. That's Bob Flock off turn number two and onto the backstretch for the first time at race speed. It's Curtis Turner with the lead. Here comes Bob Flock charging with help from the number three, Bill Snowden. To turn number three and four they go. It's going to be Flock on the inside who might lead this first lap, and I believe he will unless the 41 of Turner can get a good run on the outside. Let's see at the line. It's going to be Bob Flock who leads the first lap of a new year. And in the back, some movement. That might be the 71 of Sarah Christian. Can't be the 14 of Roy Hall as we see him fourth on the inside line. And down the back for the second time today, Turner inching ahead with help from Fonny Flock. So Bob Flock versus Curtis Turner out front. Fonny Flock, Bob's brother, is up outside helping Turner, and Bill Snowden is on the inside helping Bob Flock to lead lap number two at the stripe. I believe Turner got him by two hundredths of a second. Doesn't get much closer than that at the line. Snowden now trying to come to the inside. He'll have the 11 of Bob Apperson to help him if he does, it seems. 
Let's see, does that black number three peek out? The 11 almost peeks out, Bob Apperson. But we do stay two by two, no three wide action just yet. As they come off of turn number four for the third time today, it seems as though Flock has the clear advantage, but here comes Turner on the outside. In the tri-oval, it is Flock once again. But Turner had the run off the tri-oval. He's gonna try an inch ahead in turn number one. Off turn two, down the back, side by side, the entire field virtually with somebody they're competing against and really cannot gain any ground on each other. Two equal lanes, both about 15 cars strong. And it's Flock trying to lead his second straight lap turner on the outside. He's going to get it by one hundredth of a second. How about that, Curtis Turner? He's been back and forth with the laps led. Of course, it will not matter in this race how many laps you lead or if you do lead a lap once we get started with the points paying races with the Daytona 500 on Sunday. That will matter as bonus points, five points for leading a lap and five bonus points for the most laps led as well. But look at this, Bob Flock for the first time today. Somebody is clearly out front. It's the blue and purple number seven of Bob Flock, but here comes Bill Snowden on the inside. Snowden who helped Bob Flock to lead those few preliminary laps here in the Gatorade 125, the first Gatorade 125 mile race. Now it is Snowden, a new leader out front at Daytona. Apperson helping Snowden as we said he would. Not really a fight to make it into the Daytona 500 as there would normally be here in the 125. As not only will there be a fight up front for the win in the race, there will also be a fight to see who can make the Great American Race Sunday on ABC. But it's still Bob Flock out front, retaking the lead from the number three, Bill Snowden. Snowden trying to charge on the inside. He will get there. Flock cannot cover him off. And now Turner behind Flock pushing him. Oh, Snowden tried to come up to try and clear the seven. Tries to clear him again. Almost squeezes the seven into the wall. And they go three wide for the lead. Apperson on the inside now. He's become the favorite to get it. And I believe he's going to clear Bob Flock off the corner. Yes, he does. He doesn't move up. Well, here comes Flock now as Snowden moves into the outside lane. Second in line there at the line. It's Bob Flock leading. What a recovery from getting stranded on the outside line as they go three wide again. In that sucker hole in the middle with no help, Bob Apperson. He's probably going to fall back here. I believe he does. Hall on the inside. This is for second, the outside lane. Well, obviously the place you want to be on the straights in the corners, maybe so. Well, look at this, Flock and Bill Snowden out to the front all by themselves virtually. That's about as much a lead as you can get over the pack here at Daytona. And in fourth, that white car is, or sorry, third, that white car is Bob Apperson. Turner in fourth, he's going to try and make a move, but we stay focused on the leaders now as Turner goes to the inside for third. Here he comes trying to get Snowden for second. I don't think he got to the inside there. Apperson and Fonny Flock dancing around for the fourth position there. As they go side by side for second. That's exactly what the seven Bob Flock wants to see. Not this, the red number 41, the pole sitter for this race, Curtis Turner. Back up into the lead for the first time since about lap number four. 
And now just four laps to go as here comes Fani Flock to the inside. Winner of this race will be the pole sitter for the Daytona 500 on Sunday. Fonty Flock with Turner behind. He can't get to the inside of him because Snowden, <laughs> not Snowden, that's Roy Hall in the 14 on the inside. With help from another red car. I believe that is the 25 of Bob Smith, but here is, no, it's the 18 of John Wright, but here comes Turner on the outside of Fonny Flock. Dead even at the line, at least going down to the hundredths of a second. Three laps to go. Bonnie Flock, brother Bob in this race in that blue and purple number seven car that was leading for the majority of the early and middle section. Also is another brother, Tim Flock, who's going to drive the number 90 in the second 125 coming up right after this. Two laps, five miles remain in this first qualifying race for the Daytona 500. on the outside with help from Bob Flock. Fonny Flock on the inside with help from Roy Hall in the 14. So very close as they come on to the back stretch. One and a half laps remain. Inside goes Erickson on the back straightaway. That'll make it three wide for I believe the fifth or sixth positions back there. Maybe the seventh position. But as they come off of turn number four, they'll get the white flag in the tri-oval. It'll be one lap to go at the line. Turner's going to lead. White flag. This is it. And Fonny's falling back. Not even to the second position. Now here he comes. His flock gets out of the groove. That's Bob Flock. He's going to get all the way up almost into the wall and here comes Fonny to the inside half a lap remains Roy Hall with him and Curtis Turner with Bob Flock here's Erickson three wide for third position can he make a move for the lead and the win here they come off of turn number four Fonny Flock with the lead can Curtis Turner get him let's see coming to the line it's going to be close I think Turner got him, and he did. Two hundredths of a second. How's about that for the finish of the first Gatorade 125 of the 1949 Strictly Stock season? Curtis Turner in the red number 41, your winner over Fonny Flock will get you the full results in just a few moments here on ESPN. So here you go, the full results for the first Gatorade 125 of, the, uh, of this Thursday. As we said, the winner and the pole sitter for the Daytona 500 on Sunday, Curtis Turner, average speed 196.353 miles an hour. How about that? Fonny Flock finishes second, just 18 thousands behind Turner. Bob Flock, Fonny's brother in third position. Ray Erickson in the five had a charge at the end, but wasn't able to convert it into anything but a fourth place position. That'll start him in, I believe, the seventh position for the 500 on Sunday. Bill Snowden rounds out the top five in his number three. He led a little bit. He was the first driver to be uh, over a tenth back of Turner. Sixth, Roy Hall in the 14 had a few stints up front, but was mostly mired in the pack, helping, to, uh, helping the leaders to win the race. I believe he helped Flock on the inside. He was mostly on the inside the entire day. Ted Chamberlain, we didn't mention him a lot, uh, throughout the day, he finished 7th in the number 93. Bob Apperson, who I believe led, I, I think, one lap, finished in the 8th position. George Mantooth in the number 88 finished ninth, And in the 18, John Wright 
finished in 10th position. Dead even between uh, the 43 of Jack Russell and Jim Pascal for 11th and 12th, both four tenths back exactly, but Russell got the edge of Pascal. 13th, the 25, Bob Smith. Lou Volk finished in 14th in the 52. Tony Genovi in the 73 finished out the top 15. Then in, in 16th, we had Bobby Green and rounding out the field, the 29, Clarence Benton, the 86, Harvey Hillegas, the 91, Ethel Mobley, the 9, Raymond Lewis, and rounding out the 21-car field for this first Gatorade 125, the number one car driven by B.E. Renfro, who finished 1.135 seconds off of Turner. So that's it. Congrats to Curtis Turner on not only winning this first Gatorade 125, the first race of the year, but also with it, he will sit on the pole position for the Daytona 500 come Sunday. Coming up next here on ESPN after a short break, it's the second Gatorade 125 from Daytona. Welcome back to Daytona and welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the Gatorade 125 mile qualifying races for Sunday's Daytona 500. You will see that race live on ABC. Right now it's the second qualifier after the first one finished in spectacular fashion. Curtis Turner by 18 thousandths of a second over uh, Fonte Flock for the win in the first Gatorade 125 race, as well as the pole for Sunday's Daytona 500. Turner will sit on the pole position for that. Let's get you started before the command with the starting grid for this event, the second race of the day. Bill Blair will start on pole position after a speed of 188.985 miles an hour in qualifications. Lee Petty starts in second position just alongside. Sarah Christian starts inside row number two and third. Glenn Dunaway alongside her. Tim Flock, brother of both Fonte and Bob, who raced in uh, 125 miler number one, starts in fifth. Otis Martin in the number four starts alongside him in sixth. Herb Thomas in 7th with Dick Linder driving the number 8 starting 8th. Slick Smith starts ninth. Sam Rice in the number 2 rounds out the top 10. Clyde Minter and Buck Baker make up row number 6. Chuck Mahoney and Jim Caruso 13th and 14th. Howard Elder in the 30 and Al Bonnell in the 6 car 15th and 16th. Fred Johnson, Skip Lois, Jimmy O'Brien or Jack O'Brien sorry and Pat Kirkwood start or round out this 20-car field. Let's get the command, and then we're ready to go racing for the second time today in Daytona. Drivers, start your engines! So there you go. The command is given, and we're ready to go for the second time today. It's another 13 laps of racing around this 2.5-mile tri-oval track, a super speedway. The tri-oval banked at 18 degrees. The corners turns 1, 2, 3, and 4. Turn 1 that they're going into right now banked at 31 degrees. Backstretch banked at about 2 degrees. Same with those short straights coming from the tri-oval to the corners. So as we said, a 20-car field here. 21 cars for Gatorade 125 number 1. That means every car that showed up today will be getting a spot in the 500 on Sunday. Meaning, this really doesn't matter to see who will get into the 500. It just matters to see where you'll be starting the 500. As the 20 car field makes their way down the back stretch on their one and only pace lap, or at least one and only scheduled pace lap. Uh, we get ready for the final race of the day here on ESPN and the final race for a little while of Strictly Stock Competition on ESPN. Races 1 through 10 in points races will be seen on ABC. Race number 11, that being the Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond, a Saturday night race. I believe it's the first Saturday night race of the year. That will be seen on ESPN right here, and that'll lead into our all-star race coverage at the Charlotte Motor Speedway just one week before Memorial Day. But we still have 
a lot of racing to go before then, especially right now. 13 laps to decide who will start in second position for the Daytona 500 on Sunday. Once again, you'll be able to see that on ABC, our sister network. Bill Blair leads them to green. We are racing once again, and for these drivers, it's their first of the new season. And what a jump by Blair. He's going to get the lead from Lee Petty off the jump. And into turn one. Cars screaming off almost now, I believe, at 150 miles an hour. Got to be over that as they come down the back straightaway. It's Blair, then Petty, then Christian, then Tim Flock in the number 90. Christian trying to make her way down to the inside as Petty almost takes her nose off. And Lee Petty, he's going to try and lead lap number one of a new season for him. Off turn number four, can Christian make a move? 19, Clyde Minter coming down pit lane. Must have a mechanical issue. That will not be good for his chances of winning the Daytona 500 on Sunday. Petty leads lap one of Gatorade 125 number two by just by under a hundredth of a second. But now it's Christian on the inside with help from Herb Thomas who will take the lead down the back. And now that'll allow Thomas to come to the inside. Slick Smith behind him, trying to peek out and make a move. He does not. He tucks in behind the 92. Off corner number four for the second time. Herb Thomas now trying to lead at the line. He does not. Once again. Dead even, at least going down to the hundredths of a second. It's Sarah Christian in the lead, and now she clears the 92. 42, Lee Petty all the way up, almost in the wall, trying to gain as many spots as he can. Just tucks in right behind the black number 71 car. And Christian into turn three, trying to go down to the bottom to clear the 92. Cannot get there. It'll be Thomas to the inside off of four. Trying to lead his first lap of the day. Herb Thomas in the 92. It looks like he will by just about a car length. Let's see if we can check in on the 19. He seems to be running. And he is. The field is about to make their way up on him as lap traffic. See if he moves out of the way or not. Here they come down the back stretch at almost twice his speed. Christian with the lead. Petty right behind him. There's the 19. Let's see if he'll play a factor. He probably will. Blair to the inside of Petty off of four. They'll run three wide for second position as Petty tries to make the outside lane work for first. But he won't get there. But Blair now suddenly in the mix. Let's see where the 19 goes. They're going to split them it seems. No, outside lane's going to get bogged down. So this will spread apart the pack. Inside lane, at least a few of the inside lane cars are going to be able to get away from the rest of the field, especially these two. Bill Blair to the inside of Sarah Christian for the lead. And here's Herb Thomas to the inside of Christian for second. But Blair will lead his first lap of the day. Thomas get to the inside. That's Otis Martin in the four helping him. Thomas, can he get there? I believe, can he? No, it doesn't seem like it. Blair's still going to have the lead. 
We're now off of turn four. No runs just yet. Maybe Christian's got something on the outside. Yeah, she does, but that's not the place you want to be in the tri-oval or in any of the corners. But here she comes, outside lane, powering through. With virtually no help compared to Blair or anybody else. Now Smith is going to slot in behind her, but Blair has Thomas and Buck Baker behind him. And now he tries to move up to the outside. Almost squeezed Christian into the wall, but does get the clear on the black 71, but that allows Herb Thomas to the inside. Into turn number three. Blair's gonna have the lead with an outside lane charge. He'll keep the lead as he has for pretty much about three laps or so, which is the longest streak we've seen all day, including race number one. And now, look at these two out in front. Slick Smith in third, but he's a little bit back. Now here he comes as Christian makes a move to the inside of Bill Blair. Blair's still got the lead. Slick Smith behind him. Christian has the slow car of Clyde Minter behind her. And off turn two down the back. Five laps to go, actually four and a half now. If we're being specific. Still leading, here is Christian to the inside. And even with the slower Clyde Minter behind her, she's going to get the lead it seems, unless Blair can get a run at the line. It is Christian, four to go. And Minter coming to the inside to get his lap back. Look at this, three abreast. And there's the 51, Jack O'Brien. We haven't seen him all day. Here he comes into the mix. This for second position, but O'Brien's gonna get stuck behind the 19. Smith and Blair now out front. And three wide between Christian and Petty and then the lapped car of Minter on the inside. Three to go, look at that move by Christian. Darting to the outside line to try and get around Slick Smith for second. That'll allow Petty to come to the inside to try and take third. And maybe second if he can get help from Tim Flock and that brown number 90 behind him. Just under three laps to go, or yes, three laps to go in this race. And Petty's going for the lead. How about this for the first time since early on? Lee Petty in the blue 42 is gonna take the lead. With Tim Flock behind him, it's Lee Petty. He's going to be out front. Two to go, five miles at the line. And Flock's going to try and pull down and make a move to the inside. Let's see if that'll work out for him. He's going to get there, I think. He nudges his way in. Let's see off turn two if it'll stick. No, he won't be able to clear the 42. That's going to be disastrous down the back straightaway. As now Christian tries to get to the inside of Minter, who even though he's not on the lead lap, is playing a huge role in deciding who will win this race. Petty has the lead as they come to the white flag. One lap and two and a half miles remain on this Thursday of Speed Weeks 1949. There you go. Three wide for second between Blair Smith and Flock. Lee Petty out front, exactly what he wants to see. Flock concedes, Smith to the inside, helping Petty. Will he make a move down the back? 
Black, number 28, Slick Smith. Here he comes, Petty moves to the outside, Smith to the inside, down the back, does Smith have any help? No, it's going to be Petty into three, that might be it. Blair to the outside, a last chance move. No help is there. There's Thomas, but he can't give any shove. Here they come to the line, no, here's Blair. Blair to the outside, I spoke too soon. Bill Blair wins it. My God, how about that for a run? Bill Blair in the 44 takes the win and will start second on the outside pole position for Sunday's Daytona 500. So let's get you the results now for this second Gatorade 125 miler. Bill Blair wins an average speed 196.008 miles an hour. Lee Petty finishes second, just 53 thousandths back. Herb, Thomas's, Herb Thomas finishes third in the 92. Buck Baker up into fourth position. Slick Smith all the way back to fifth position. That just shows you how much a bad move can be amplified here at Daytona. Sarah Christian finishes 6th in her first showing of the year. Tim Flock in 7th. Dick Linder started 8th, finishes 8th in the number 8 car. Seems like he likes that number. Glenn Dunaway finishes 9th. Sam Rice rounds out the top 10. Jack O'Brien in the 51 finishes 11th. Harold Elder in 12th. Otis Martin, 13th. Skip Lois, 14th. Al Bonnell in the 6th rounds out the top 15. Fred Johnson, Pat Kirkwood, Jim Caruso, Chuck Mahoney round out the lead lap competitors, and Clyde Minter one lap down in the 19, finishing 20th and last for the Gatorade 125, the second qualifying race of this year for the Daytona 500. So that is it. Bill Blair is your winner of the second Gatorade 125 miler. Curtis Turner starts on pole. Blair will start in second. Turner won the first. Blair wins the second. No points awarded today. Points will be awarded Sunday, though, in the Great American Race, the Daytona 500, seen live on ABC. Uh, that'll be around 1 o'clock Eastern Time, about 11 or 10 a.m. Pacific Time. So, I'm Matthew Merlino. For everybody at ESPN who traveled out to Daytona, to bring you this show live here in for the Daytona 500. Thank you all for watching uh, the Daytona 500 Sunday on ABC. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.